right, well, I can tell we're all here for a nomad talk. You all have been packed very efficiently, so good job on that. So my name is Nick Ethier. I'm a software engineer at HashiCorp working on Nomad. My pronouns are he, him. And um, when I'm not working on Nomad, I am an embarrassing dad and a hobby farmer, which I think is where uh, the goat dad monometer came in. All right, so let's look back a little bit. Um, so this is the last three years of releases in Nomad. And if we look back to about this time three years ago, um, we introduced Nomad 0.4. It came with Nomad Plan. Um, and there's a lot of features here that Nomad users love and use every day. You know, Nomad deployments, um, improved node draining, integration with Vault and Console, a really slick web UI. And even in the latest release, 0 0.9, which brought preemption and uh, affinities and spread and a lot of great features. But throughout all this, um, there hasn't been any improvements to networking, no, uh, no changes to how uh, networking is or orchestrated. And that's, that's on purpose. Um, Nomad is meant to be uh, very simple to use. We wanted to keep networking very simple. And console solved most of those problems in large. And so let's look at those networking problems, which uh, which you have when you're using a cluster or orchestrator. So first is service to service communication. This is uh, service A needs to talk to an instance of service B. There could be one, 10, 100 of those instances. We need to find it. Um, console, the console integration has solved this problem really well and continues to do so. Um, second is external to service. So the new buzzword here is ingress. But this has always been a problem in cluster orchestrators. This is how do you get traffic outside of the cluster, inside the cluster? And uh, there are many great community tools that have existed for a while now that users have been using to do this, including Traffic and Fabio, just to name a few. And then there's been a new problem that sort of arose in the last few years, and this is service to sidecar. And uh, we've seen this with um, uh, many great open source projects like Ambassador, Console Connect, et cetera. Um, but there's been a problem in Nomad in that you can't use these very securely. And that's because this sidecar pattern relies on um, secure communication isolated from the rest of the node for tasks running together. And in Nomad, um, Today, all of those tasks just run on the host. Um, so you can see in this example, you know, there's an application that wants to talk to a Redis cluster that's going to do it through a proxy. And maybe that proxy um, it, uh, you know, adds uh, security authentication, verifies that the service is really who they say they are. And you can't do this when everything's shared, because anything could essentially ma masquerade as another service by using um, one of those proxies. So I'm happy to announce in Nomad 0.10, we're going to introduce shared network namespaces. Um, and that's uh, coming soon. So let's look at how this works. Um, in your job file, we've uh, t taken that network stanza that used to be in the resources stanza inside of a task. And we've made it available in the group stanza. Um, so just like before, you can uh, define ports. Um, but we've added a new field. And this is this mode field. And in this example, we have um, bridge mode. So there's a few different modes that um, Nomad will come with. Um, Bridge uh, gives you that shared networking namespace. It creates a, uh, a virtual interface and bridges it with the hosts. And it creates some, uh, some rules in the firewall so we can have a, a NAT out to the world inside the cluster. And then we also are supporting port mapping so you can, uh, so you can forward ports from the host inside of your namespace. So this port stanza. Um, It's the same, same as it used to be, except we've added another field to it, too. And that's this to field. And so this, this uh, port web stanza is saying, um, allocate a port with the label web. Um, I want it to assign it to port 80 on a host somewhere. That's what that static um, variable or uh, label is. And then I want you to map it into my namespace to port 8080. And that's what that to field does. So here's sort of a diagram to see how this works. There is an allocation that is running with an IP address um, that's different than the host IP address, completely isolated. Um, and it's binding to port 8080. And we're going to forward that to the host IP at port 80. So the other thing we've done is we've taken the service stanza and, moved, and uh, made it available as well in the group stanza. Um, and this is because your, your uh, task group sort of becomes the base unit of networking now. Um, your service can be composed of other tasks running inside this task group. 
And this brings a lot of other benefits. Um, you can have uh, script checks now that run against different tasks and uh, re help report the health of that service. Um, and this, this service stands will also register the correct port with console. So you'll get the port on the host that's, uh, that's listening. So other, other um, services inside your cluster will correctly communicate through those forwarded ports. And I'm happy to also say we support um, shared networking namespace across drivers. So you can have a Docker driver or a Docker task and an exec task in the same task group, and they will still share the same networking namespace, which is really exciting. I'm also happy to say that we want to support full backwards compatibility with 0 0.9. So you bring your job spec that you had in 0 0.9, you launch it in 0 0.10, and it will operate the exact same. All of these new features are all opt-in. So I want to uh, do a demo real quick of that. And we'll see how the, uh, how the demo gods do for us. All right. So I've got a, uh, I've got a, let's see, can you all see that? Let me make that a little bit bigger. Well, actually, it doesn't matter. I'm going to drop this in my clipboard. And uh, we have a nomad cluster here. There's no jobs, so let's go ahead and run a new job. All right, and this is our job. Let's see if I can make that a little bigger. So this is just a very simple application that's going to launch uh, Redis and uh, two tasks all in the same task group. And we have a producer task and a consumer task. And the producer is just going to use Redis as a queue to send a message that says, hello from producer at this time. Um, and we're going to use this bridge network. So this is going to be an isolated, um, an isolated network namespace. And you'll notice the producer and consumer run as raw exec tasks. And they're just using you know, a path on my uh, local machine. And um, the Redis task is using a Docker image. So let's go ahead and plan this. Everything looks good. We're going to schedule everything correctly. All right. Now this is all working on spinning up. See so this allocation is running. All right. All of these tasks are running. We can look at Redis and check out the logs. Oops, this is the consumer. Let's look at Redis. There we go. So we can look at the logs and see that it is um, accepting connections at 6379. So if I drop back into my uh, terminal here, this is on my machine, and I try and find something uh, 6379 listening on that port, there's, there's nothing there because it's, it's not in the host namespace. So we can also um, hop back over here and check out the logs for that consumer. And we can see that you know, we're getting these messages. And this is all happening pub sub over the same network namespace over the loopback interface. So a very, a very uh, quick and sort of um, uh, demo just to show that functionality. All right. So let's jump back to service to service communication. <laughs> Um, like I said, Nomad has always solved sort of the dis or console, pardon me, has always solved the uh, discovery of these services in your cluster. Um, but there have always been several options to sort of do the plumbing and to uh, route things to the right place. Um, some of those options included setting up DNS and using console's DNS interface. Um, you could use a template stanza and um, you know template out that. Uh, that those services into a configuration file and reload your application. Uh, there was native integration where your application just spoke to console directly. And then there are those um, you know, proxies that have been integrated with console, like Traffic and Fabio said before. But all of these um, fail to solve the problem of service segmentation. Um, and what I mean here is that um, you know, if one of those services com are compromised, you essentially have full range of the, uh, the whole network. The attacker can hit any node they want. They can, ask the, uh, you know, they can even ask the service registry, in some cases, where those services are. And so in essence, you've let a hen or a, a fox into the hen house, um, or in my case, my two-year-old son. Now, the way I uh, keep my chickens safe on my farm um, is I keep them in a coop and in a run. So I keep them segmented from um, anything where predators could, could um, attack them. And funny enough, this is sort of how enterprise network security works in a very simplified way. You, you have um, a load balancer that sits at the edge of your network um, that load balances traffic through a firewall, usually with static ports and addresses to your applications. Um, your application 
um, can talk to each other. There's usually only a few of them in this monolith world. Um, and, then, and then they may need to talk to a database that's in a protected um, segment of your network. So they, again, need to go through another firewall, usually with um, you know, port, static port and IP again, to reach the database. Um, but as we get into the world, the wild west of cloud native and microservice architecture, this becomes really, really hard to manage. Um, and you know, as, as previously an operator myself, I look at that and say, that looks like a nightmare to try and manage security for. I mean, that's the face I make when I try and manage you know, microservice infrastructure. You know, who here has made that face before? <laughs> so um, this, our solution to this, of course, is Console Connect, which we've heard a lot about these last two days. And Console Connect ser um, solves this problem through um, a couple different ways. First is it's, uh, it's service access graph API. So these are these, those intentions that um, you may have heard of. And this, this allows you to say, on a service level, service A is allowed to talk to service B, but cannot talk to the database. Um, so this gives us our authorization. But we still need authentication. We still need to know service A is really service A. So this is why Console Connect also has a uh, certificate authority. So, a mutual TLS connection happens between those two services, and we can guarantee from both ends that, that you know, service A is talking to me, and they're really service A, and I'm really talking to service B because I can verify their certificate on that end. Um, Console Connect also supports a native integration, so there is an API library that you can integrate directly into your application. But typically, the way that most people solve this is, again, through this sidecar pattern. And um, this is why having network namespace support in, in Nomad is so crucial to having a very secure service mesh solution. So again, in this example, um, we have a proxy task and an application task. And then that proxy task is going to get its configuration um, through console. Um, and uh, to do that, all you have to do is drop in this connect stanza into your, into your uh, service stanza. And this sidecar service stanza just lets you have the default settings to launch a task in Nomad that will make your task um, uh, connect enabled. So this is really great, because Nomad will actually launch Envoy for you and manage it, bootstrap it, make sure the configuration is, is retrieved from console correctly, um, all for you. You don't have to think about it. Um, and this task is actually injected into your uh, task group when, you, when it's submitted. So you need to also um, declare who you want to talk to, what services this task is going to talk to. And this is because um, um, Envoy needs to create a, a unique port for each of those upstream tasks. So in this example, we're um, defining an upstream. We want to talk to Redis. Um, we're going to bind to 6379. So there's going to, it's the, the um, proxy is going to bind to localhost 6379, so it just looks like a local Redis instance, just like in that previous example. Um, but what's really going to happen is you're going to have a, a, a complete end-to-end -end secure encryption between that application and that Redis instance in that example. So you get a few new environment variables added into your application um, runtime. So when you launch a task, you'll notice um, we have these upstream environment variables for each upstream you define. This lets you um, sort of programmatically um, conf configure applications to talk to upstreams. And um, that local bind port setting as well, we plan to make optional and have Nomad just um, find a random port that's available inside your network namespace for you. So it, it all happens on automatic for you. So I want to do one more demo for you, um, this time with Console Connect. And what I'm going to, uh, this is sort of a diagram of what I want to set up. Um, we're going to have two allocations, um, a dashboard and an API that that dashboard talks to. Um, and they're going to communicate um, through Console Connect. And we're going to connect to that dashboard through a forwarded port. So let's get started. All right. So let me grab my other job file. All right, so I've got another Nomad cluster here. I'm going to go ahead and drop this job file in. And let's look through it. It's a little bit more complicated than the last one. So we have um, you know, one task group here for the API. It's operating in bridge mode again. Um, we're defining a service. We're just calling this count API, because this is a counting dashboard. Um, and we're, we're statically defining the port here. And that's because we don't, 
we don't want the service to be um, the port on the host because we're using Console Connect. So this, this having the port here lets um, this sidecar know um, what port to bind to when it needs to talk to your application over localhost. So we have the service defined, and then we jump into our task. This is just a Docker task with a um, standard image. Then we have another group defined in this job, um, the dashboard. And we, it's also in bridge mode, so it's going to be isolated again. Um, and we're going to allocate a port on the host, we'll label it HTTP. Uh, I've got a static port here just to make it easier for us to, to use this, but there's no reason it couldn't be dynamic. Um, and we're going to port map it into 9002. We're going to uh, set, up this, uh, set up this service stanza again so we can have Console Connect support. Um, it's running at port 9002 inside the, inside the namespace. So let's set the connect stanza up to have an upstream for the count API. And we're going to bind locally on port 8080. So the task for this dashboard then just looks like this. We, we uh, define an environment variable that this uh, application expects that this, uh, it can reach this counting service just at loopback for 8080. And uh, again, just the image for this. Let's go ahead and plan this. Now, what's really interesting about this plan is um, not only do we have our two task groups, which will be created as allocations, um, and the tasks associated with them, you'll see there's an extra task added to each of these task groups. And so um, when Nomad injects the sidecar into your application, you know about that at plan time, so you can see every change that's going to happen to your application. And uh, that's something that's really, really exciting for me, I think. So everything's been planned here. Let's go ahead and run it. All right. So this dashboard is starting up. Let's see. Let's look at the API first. This API is starting up. You see we have this Nomad Envoy task available now. And we've got a little, uh, little icon here to denote that it's a proxy task that we've injected. Um, we can look at this. You know, Again, we have some, some indication that it's a proxy task. Um, and you have the standard, you know, these are some task events that, that have happened for the task, if you're not familiar with Nomad. So the client received it. It built the uh, directory and started it up. We can look at the logs here. Envoy will log, uh, and we have it set in debug mode right now. We'll log into standard error. So everything looks great there. Let's jump back up and look at this dashboard. All right. So again, we have this um, Nomad Envoy task. Um, that's, that's part of this task group, too. And you can see down here we have uh, the uh, addresses that, um, that are associated with it. Um, and there is, a, there is a port that we allocate for the not Nomad Envoy task um, so that those, so those Nomad mad proxies are port forwarded to the host. And then behind the scenes, we actually register it with console with the correct port so those, those um, proxy instances know how to talk to each other. All right, so this dashboard is running on port um, 28080. So let's go find the client that it's on. So this is the client server. And we can grab the IP from its metadata here, right here. All right, let's go ahead and hit that, port 28080. All right. And this is just a very simple dashboard. You may have seen this before if you've seen some of the other Console Connect demos. Um, this dashboard, just in real time, updates the count from, a, from that back end count API. Um, let's see if I can um, um, kill it here. So let's do this. Uh -huh, this is what I want. So I'm going to connect to this cloud instance. And we're going to try and um, we're going to try and make this fail. We're going to try and kill some tasks and see if we can we can get this dashboard to crash. Hopefully, we can log in here. All right. While that's going, we might be able to um, we might be able to crash it from the uh, from the Nomad dashboard. Let's try that. All right. So let's go back to this guy. Now, this is the dashboard. It needs this Nomad Envoy proxy task. Maybe if we restart it, we can get something to happen here. All right. Oh, I think it restarted too fast. Dang it. Let's see if I can connect to my, uh, where'd my cloud instance go? Um, nope. All right. 
right. Oh, I seem to have lost that. Let's, let's just kill the task and see if we can do it that way. Let's just take the allocation itself and just, let's just restart it. Bye-bye, allocate. Oh, there we go. We disconnected. We've killed. Oh, it reconnected. Dang it. <laughs> Come on. All right. Let's try the API. Maybe we can kill the API. All right. This is the API. All right. Restart the API. That'll work. All right. No, come on. Well, we resetted the counter. I mean, that's something. But so, so you know, as funny as this is, we're just, I'm just trying to, uh, to um, you know, show you how powerful this is to have Nomad managing this Envoy proxy for you. Um, anything happens to it, Nomad will take care of it and restart it as needed. All right. Let's jump back to the, uh, to the slides here. All right, so what if this bridge networking mode isn't enough for you? What if you, uh, maybe you run on bare metal and uh, you need to do something special with like a layer two network, or maybe you have this, um, this overlay networking vendor that has sold you that this is the future and you need to integrate with that. Um, what do you do? Because this won't work, all right? So in, uh, in a future release of Nomad, we plan to integrate CNI directly with Nomad. Um, so if you haven't heard of CNI, it's, it stands for Container Network Interface, and it provides a very common interface that network vendors can use to develop plugins um, you know, that, uh, that, given a network namespace, can create the interfaces, the routing rules, the IP tables rules, whatever, whatever is necessary to connect to the network. Um, this is a very simple example here. This just uh, says um, we have a bridge network we want to join. We've given it a name. We say we, wanna, we want it to create a default gateway so we can route out. And we want it to you know, masquerade as the host IP, so an IP tables rule is set up. And there's some, there's some IPAM plugins as well. We're just going to use a host local one that allocates an um, IP address that's unique to that host um, out of the given range. And so the way this works in Nomad is Nomad creates your allocation, um, or your network namespace for that allocation, really. Um, and then it calls the, it calls the CNI plugin in, with the configuration, as well as um, where the handle for your namespace is. So that plugin can take all that information and create what is needed for your application to connect to the network. And uh, there are many CNI plugins um, that the CNI community sort of maintains. Um, and uh, you know, there, there are many listed here. You can do IP VLAN, MAC VLAN. Um, these are all great. Um, if you need a, a DHCP, and I address from DHCP, you can use the DHCP IPAM plugin. And then there's also some uh, sort of meta plugins. Um, you can actually chain plugins together so the output goes into the input of the next plugin. And that's where these meta plugins come in. Um, you know, there's, there's, uh, the port map one specifically is really interesting because it, that is what does mapping of ports into a network namespace. Now, the bridge implementation of Nomad is actually just a CNI configuration under the hood. Um, we, use, we make use of the bridge plugin, the host local IPAM plugin, and the firewall and port map meta plugins um, to set things up. And what's really cool about this is that because Nomad will build the correct arguments for this port map plugin, um, someone who um, needs to use CNI can come along and just add this port map plugin as part of their uh, plugin list. And you just you get that, that um, port mapping with that two variable from a port stanza for free. It will, it will just work with your CNI application. So this opens up a ton of really exciting possibilities for Nomad to integrate with um, many of the, uh, the new and upcoming um, virtual networking solutions. So, Finally, I want to talk about Console Connect gateways. Um, gateways are actually very easy to deploy on Nomad itself. Um, um, Eric actually has a, a really great um, demo um, downstairs at the booth that uses gateways between a Kubernetes and a Nomad cluster to, to fail things over to a Nomad cluster through a gateway or do traffic splitting and things like that. They're very easy to deploy right on Nomad. And so, I want you for a second. We've we've talked about you know work that we've done here the last few months, but let's let's look at the future here for a moment. 
Um, you know, if you've used Nomad before, you've, you've used a deployment. You know, Nomad can roll out changes to your application. It can also do like a canary deployment that lets you create four instances of your, of your new application, you know, verify things work, and roll forward. Now, as we continue to integrate Nomad with these console connect features, we could do things like um, traffic splitting with that deployment. So you have a canary deployment that, that happens, and as that deployment is uh, created, Nomad goes and it creates a traffic splitting rule to split traffic over. Um, as, we, as it builds more confidence, more traffic and more traffic could be spl split over to the new side. And you still could have um, make use of uh, Nomad can pause deployments and roll back deployments. All of that could be integrated with Console Connect to give you a very seamless networking story with your deployments. So I hope you all have enjoyed this, uh, this presentation and these demos I've given you. Everything I've shown today is it will be available in open source Nomad in 0 0.10. And I'm happy to announce that we've prepared a technology preview build for you um, that includes the network namespacing and the console connect features. That's available at nomadproject.io under the guides section. So thank you.